Okay, uh, this is Dan Calloway, and welcome to part two of hardening your SSH daemon server, remote daemon server in Linux. Uh, as you recall from my first video, in part one, we secured the remote SSH daemon server. Uh, in my case, the remote server is running on my Raspberry Pi at an IP address of 192.168.1.90 out on my LAN. And we, uh, we did that by um, configuring or modifying rather the Etsy sshd underscore config file and in that file what we did was we prohibited root uh, or restricted root from logging in uh, to an SSH session and we also allowed Pi as the only user to uh, remote in uh, using an SSH session uh, and we did that by uh, saying that we only allow groups, and the group we're allowing is admins, A-D-M-I-N-S, uh, and the admins group is anybody that belongs to that group can log in uh, or create an SSH session to that remote server, uh, daemon server, and if you don't belong to that group, you're not going to be allowed to do it. And Pi was added as a member of that group. So Pi is the only user uh, on the remote uh, system, which is my Raspberry Pi, as I said, that can log in. Uh, root is denied and Pi is the only user. Let's go ahead and show that one more time. I'm going to go ahead and log in as Pi, so I'm going to SSH into Pi at 192.168.1.90 and uh, let's go ahead and put Pi's password in. Hold on a minute, let me back up. Put in the wrong password. Okay, all right, so now I'm logged in as, as Pi uh, remotely. We're looking at, uh, here's MagPi, it's one of the directories on my remote system. So we are logged in as Pi. And so we were able to do that because Pi belongs to the admins group. Let me go ahead and exit and break the connection, get back to my Linux system. Uh, who am I? I am Data Pioneer. And so let's try to log in as root now in an SSH session to the Pi. And so let's do SSH root at 192.168.1.90 and let's asking for the password okay, it says permission denied let's try again and it should say permission denied again And why is it not doing anything? I don't know. Uh, let's break that. Let's try it again. SSH root at 192.168.1.90. Okay, a connection refused. The reason that happened was because I've also got uh, a host.deny file running out there on the Pi that says if root tries to log in, go ahead and just. Uh, ban that particular user and so now I'm banned uh, from getting into uh, uh, to the remote server probably can't even log in spy but we'll try it SSH pi at 192.168.1.90 let's try it again yeah I'm actually locked out now so um, let me stop the video and take care of that and I'll be back okay I'm back um, yeah I had been banned at 192.168.1.203 on the Arch Linux VM that I'm on, and so I unbanned myself, and so I'm now back in. Um, if I log in as root, then I'm going to be banned again, so I'm not going to do that. So anyway, so we have effectively uh, prevented root from logging in, and we've also allowed only Pi to log in because we have Pi a member of admins group. Now I'm going to introduce another uh, layer of security here on hardening your SSH daemon server, uh, remote daemon server. And that is an application called fail to ban. And fail to ban allows you to set ban time, allows you to set find time. We'll get into that in a moment, what that is. Um, how long the person is banned if they attempt to log in and they're not allowed to. Um, and that's, that's very nice. It, what happens is fail to ban, which is an application you can install on the remote server, monitors the system logs for authentication and other things that uh, happen 
in a, a particular application for SSHD fail to ban monitors your auth.log at, at var log auth.log and if there are in my case uh, three failed attempts to log in uh, it bans you and it bans you for 24 hours I've got it set for 24 hours I believe all right so let's look at fail to ban um, if you could do an uh, let me log in as root first and get back in here and let's log in as root so now I am root here, and so let's SSH um, to pi at 192.168.1.90, and uh, yes, and pi's password. Let's try it again. Put in the wrong password. Okay, there we go. So I'm logged in. Um, let me do an LSLH here, and you can see I am on the Pi, and there's MagPy. Uh, but if I do a PWD, you can see I'm at Home Pi, and if I do a Who Am I, you can see I'm User Pi. So I'm logged into my remote system, uh, and I'm logged in uh, SSH. So I was able to reach that remote server because Pi is in the admins group, as I mentioned. Okay, so if you want to install fail to ban, uh, you can go ahead and install it by doing an apt, well first of all look and search for it, so apt search uh, fail to ban, okay, and it'll go out and search for it and it should find it and it should tell you that it's already installed in my case, yeah here it is, it's fail to ban, it's an old stable dot now uh, repo, I've got it installed so I'm not going to install it again but it says ban hosts that cause multiple authentication errors okay so that's exactly what it does it does a great job doing it when fail to ban gets installed and you would install that obviously by doing a sudo uh, here I've got, I'm already root I believe no I'm not sudo apt get install fail to ban would be how you would install it so I'm not going to install it and then to check the status on uh, fail to ban once it is installed status SSH there we go not the D. And uh, even though it makes sense that it would be a D because it's the daemon or the server. It says that the SSH service is uh, OpenBSD Secure Shell Server. It is loaded, it's active running, and it is enabled, which means it will survive a reboot or a boot up to the system from cold. Um, and it will be running at runtime uh, for that run level in Arch Linux. All right, so we're, we're good to go there. Now, when fail to ban gets installed, it gets installed. Uh, the config file for it um, is at etsy fail to ban. All right, and so let's take a look at that and what's there. And so here's the config file, and we don't really need to get into that fail to ban dot conf uh, or conf. There is a file, however, we do need to get into. Uh, to configure fail to ban for our use, and that is called jail.conf. Fail to ban calls every application uh, that you have on your system that's being monitored by it a jail, okay, so that you can control who accesses it. Uh, you don't want to update this particular file, however. What you want to do is you want to copy that file to this file here called jail.local. The reason for that is it's because uh, in updates to fail to ban, the jail.conf file will get overwritten, so any modifications you make in that file will probably be overwritten and go revert back to the default, and so you don't want to do that. And so you would just run simply a copy command to jail.conf, the jail.local, run that, and then uh, you'll have your jail.local file. All right, so we do have a jail.local, and so I'm going to go ahead and nano. Uh, let me do su again, get into that as root so I don't have to do sudo all the time um, and that's okay while you're just in here for a while uh, you don't want to leave it logged in as root however and you know that and so here we have uh, nano jail.local okay and here's the file and so it just says heavily refactored um, 0 0.9.0 release um, how to activate the jails it goes into that so let's go down the file here um, it has the default settings, ban time, and SSHD enabled equals true, but that's not where we enable it, so let's keep going. 
let's come down to the default section here and here's the first thing that we need to look at and that is in the band time okay uh, by default band time I believe is um, 600 seconds just like find time here um, don't quote me on that but I believe that's what it is um, and this is the amount or number of seconds that a host is banned once they are banned 600 seconds that's uh, 10 minutes that's not enough for me because if a user is deliberately trying to brute force attack your your remote SSH server um, you know they're going to be banned for a while so what I did was I increased my ban time here to 24 hours 86,400 seconds so if you get banned by three unsuccessful attempts and the reason is three is cause under max retry I've set that from the default of five down to three so that's the number of failures and that's I wanted to increase the security on my SSH daemon server and so I said five is too many uh, if they try three times unsuccessfully then I'm gonna ban them and they get banned for 86,400 seconds or 24 hours um, the find time is the amount of time they have from the time they initiate a session uh, in SSH uh, in other words hit the server until they attempt to log in and so here that's 10 minutes and so that gives them 10 minutes to do that that's okay at 600 seconds so I left it that way and so that's what I've got set up right now three failed attempts to log into the SSH daemon server you get banned for 24 hours uh, and so that bans their IP address and they can't log in so let's go on down uh, we're going to get into the jail section here. We'll get into the jail stanza in a moment. Here we are. Here are the jails. Okay. And um, and this is the first one we encounter here is the SSHD or daemon server. And so I set that to enable equals true, which means I've turned the jail on. Um, and then it looks for the on the port for running for SSH, and it looks at these logs for authentication purposes and um, and if you have three unsuccessful attempts in my case you get banned. Another jail that I set up was the SSH daemon uh, de distributed denial of service attack that could be run against the server um, and I enabled that equals true okay come on down uh, I have I think one more that I set up or two more actually I believe uh, here we've got the um, Apache authentication server. So in Apache, I've enabled that to true as well. And it looks at the authentication logs uh, in Apache and bans if you have three successful attempts to log in there. And let's go on down. I don't know if I have any more set up or not. Um, don't believe I do. All right, so let's get out of this file. So this is the file that you would need to update. And so you do a control X and you would do yes because uh, if you modify the file, you'll need to do that. And so one thing that's really important um, once you modify any file and fail to ban is to go ahead and restart fail to ban so that it gets uh, reread. You know, jail.local file gets reread. So we made modifications. Service fail to ban. Restart. Okay, sorry. Had them flip flopped. So it's service, fail to ban, restart. That restarts the fail to ban server. And so now anything that we did in that file gets um, recognized and updated. So let's go ahead and run the client and check and see what we have. So I'm going to run a, a command that checks the status of the client. And that it, command is fail to ban client status. I'll just run the status first. And that tells us the number of jails that we have. We have four jails, and the jail listing is the Apache Authentication, the SSH daemon server, the SSH daemon uh, dedicated or distributed rather denial of service, and the VSFTPD. I have a VSFTPD or very secure FTP daemon server running out on the uh, Raspberry Pi as well. So I've got four jails set up out there, and so now if I want to get a specific uh, status on any one of these jails I can run the same command except after that status part is put in the sshd which is the jail and it tells me right now that I have currently fail none total fail zero 
the file that it's looking at is varlog auth.log and uh, the actions that were taken here currently band 0, total band 0 and then if any IP addresses got banned uh, they would be right in here, they would be listed right here. Um, I have run this before and I had uh, an IP address uh, that I, I ran a trace route on uh, located it in India. Somebody tried to log into my SSH daemon server and they tried three times unsuccessfully. They got banned and their IP address was listed right here on the banned IP list. Okay, So this thing works really well. It runs 24 hours around the clock. Uh, I never turned my Raspberry Pi off. I never turned the servers off. So this thing will is constantly monitoring um, you know your files and so it's monitoring that by the way at um, let's go to the file cat of Etsy var yeah, var not Etsy it's cat var log uh, auth log can't type today all right so here's the file and so uh, if you did a tail on that let's let's do a tail on that tail of uh, var log auth log okay and so you can see the last I believe it's 10 lines here um, of the uh, of that file you can see what's what's going on with it if you do a, an F switch you know a tail tack F it'll be followed here so that you can actually see if somebody tries to log in um, you know it's sitting down here waiting for another line to be generated on the file and so um, you can actually see somebody attempting to log in if they get banned it's going to tell you that as well but the fail to ban application is very good because it it monitors the various logs uh, for the daemon server for SSH for very secure FTP for uh, HTTPD which is the Apache web server and it monitors those for you automatically and bans automatically users who attempt to log in. So it's just another layer of security over and above uh, modifying that uh, Etsy sshd underscore config file um, and it works very effectively. Uh, like I said, I had, I've had users banned before and they're banned for 24 hours. They don't usually come back because they know they're being banned. And so this has been part two of hardening your SSH daemon server and in part three, we'll take a look at another layer of security, which is really not necessary because we have failed to ban, but you know, we can add that on as well. And that's called host.deny and host.allow uh, um, and something called deny host application, which uh, when a particular user gets banned, then the entry is made in the host.deny. And so we'll take a look at that in part three. All right, so uh, if you like my videos here, go ahead and comment and uh, hit the subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that um, bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when new videos get uploaded. All right, so you have a nice day and take care. Bye-bye.